A few days ago, GSAP featured this website as their site of the day on Twitter, and after checking it out, it was clear why. It's packed with some seriously impressive animations. The one that caught my attention the most was this unique scroll animation. As you scroll, images animate in with a smooth clip mask reveal as they enter the viewport, followed by a clean text reveal. As they leave the viewport, the clip path animation plays again, this time on the way out. I was hooked on the idea, so I decided to give it a shot. In a couple of hours, I put together this mini scroll experience inspired by that idea using GSAP and Scroll Trigger. It includes both animations, the clip path image reveal, and a character by character text animation powered by the split text plugin. In this video, I'll walk you through how to create this effect with very minimal GSAP and Scroll Trigger. If you find this helpful, a like would mean a lot, and if you haven't already, consider subscribing for more breakdowns like this. And if you'd like to access the source code for this project, plus hundreds of other similar micro projects and a complete website template every month, you can check out the pro membership via the link in the description. Alright, let's get started. We'll start with the basic page structure by adding two simple sections, a hero at the top and an outro at the bottom. These are mainly for layout, helping frame our scroll experience and give it a clear visual start and end. For now, I'll drop in an H1 inside each with some placeholder text so we can see them in place. Next comes the main content, the work items. We'll be creating 5 of these sections, each acting as its own animated block in the scroll sequence. Using gamut shorthand, I'll quickly generate the structure for each one. 5 sections in total, every work item will contain 2 elements. First, an image wrapper called work item image that holds the image element. And second, a title wrapper called work item name which will contain an H1 for the project name. Once that's generated, I'll update the H1s with some placeholder titles. That's all we need for the HTML, just a clean, consistent structure ready for styling. For the styling, I'll start by importing a Google font called Intertight to give the text a clean, modern look. Then, I'll reset the default spacing for all elements and make sure the box sizing is set to border box. For the body, I'll apply our font, give it a light background and set the text color to a dark shade for good contrast. Images will take up the full width and height of their containers and I'll set object fit cover to make sure they scale and crop nicely without stretching. Headings will be set to all uppercase, centered and given a large bold size with tight line spacing so they feel impactful. Every section will be positioned relative, take up the full width of the viewport and have overflow hidden so our clip path animations don't spill outside their container. For the hero and outro sections, I'll give them full viewport height, center the content both vertically and horizontally with flexbox and add some padding around the edges. Each work item will be taller than a single viewport height, giving us enough scrolling space to animate both the image and the text. The image wrapper inside each work item will be positioned absolutely to cover the full section and this is where we apply the clip path. The clip path starts as a polygon shape with angled sides and a diagonal cut. This is what gives us that masked reveal effect as the image comes in. In order to come up with these exact values, I used a small clip path visualization tool. I'll drop a link to it in the description. You can play around with different shapes and get the coordinates for each state of the animation. I'll also set will change to clip path to hint to the browser that this property will be animated, making it render more smoothly. The title container will be absolutely positioned in the very center of the section, stretched across the width and placed above the image with a higher Z index. The headings inside this container will be white, so they stand out clearly over the images. Finally, for smaller screens, I'll reduce the heading size so it stays readable without overwhelming the layout. That's all for the CSS setup. Next, we'll move on to the JavaScript to bring the animations to life. First, at the very top of the file, We'll import GSAP, both plugins and Lanis so they are available in this module. We'll use GSAP as the animation engine, scroll trigger to bind animations to scroll progress, split text so we can animate text 
at the character level and Lannis to add smooth scrolling across the page. Next, we'll wait for the DOM to be fully loaded before running any logic. This ensures every element we plan to target actually exists in the document. Inside the Tready handler, the first thing we'll do is register scroll trigger and split text with GSAP. Registering plugin is required so GSAP knows to initialize their internals for this page. Now, we'll set up smooth scrolling. I'll paste the standard Lenny snippet from the Lenny's docs, the same one we always use to enable smoothing. Here, we are basically creating a Lenny's instance. This replaces the default browser scrolling with a smoothed version that feels consistent and controlled. To keep scroll trigger perfectly in sync with that smoothing, we'll listen for Lenny's scroll events in our scroll trigger to update on each one. And we'll also disable lag smoothing on GSAP's trigger. This setup is pretty much the standard way to connect Lenis and GSAP so that they stay in sync and scroll triggered animations feel smooth. With the imports done and the scroll system wired up, our foundation is set. In the next block, we'll move into the per section logic and start targeting the elements we want to animate. First, we'll collect all the work items and loop through them one by one. This lets each section manage its own animations independently. Inside the loop, we'll grab two elements from the current section. The image wrapper will animate later and the heading inside the title container. We'll use that heading for the character by character reveal. For the reveal technique, we'll use split text to break the heading into individual characters. I'll enable masking so each character has its own clipping context. Now, before any scrolling happens, we'll set every character to start just below its baseline. Think of it as staging them off screen vertically so they're hidden and ready to move up into place. Instead of a single stagger tween, we'll create a tiny scroll trigger for each character. The trigger for every character uses the same section as its trigger element but with a slight start and end offset based on the character's index. That offset spaces out the timing so characters roll in sequentially as the section approaches. Each character animation scrubs with the scroll so the motion is fully tied to scroll position, push forward to reveal, pull back to conceal. We'll keep the easing linear so it feels precise and UI-like rather than floaty. By giving each character its own trigger and using index-based offset, we get fine-grained control and consistent behavior across sections, all without managing a large timeline or manual stagger math. Next, we'll set up the image clip path animations for enter and exit to complete the effect. First, I'll create a scroll linked animation for the enter phase. This one is attached to the current section, so all timing is based on when that block moves through the viewport. I'll set the start so it begins as the top edge of the section touches the bottom of the viewport and I'll set the end so it finishes when that same top edge reaches the very top of the viewport. With scrub enabled, the mask change will follow the scroll in real time, no play or pause feeling just a direct mapping between your scroll and the reveal. For the animation itself, the image starts with the angled mask we defined in CSS. As we scroll through this range, that shape opens up into a clean, full rectangle which gives us unmasking effect as the image comes into view. I'll keep the easing flat here, that way, what you scroll is exactly what you see, no acceleration to distract from the UI feel. Next, I'll add a separate animation for the exit phase. This one also uses the current section as the trigger but the timing is based on the bottom edge of the section instead. I'll start the section so it kicks in when the bottom edge lines up with the bottom of the viewport and I'll set the end so it completes when that bottom edge reaches the top of the viewport. Again, scrub stays on so the shape change stays glued to scroll position. For this exit animation, the image begins fully unmasked in the center state. As you scroll out, the rectangle collapses into a second polygon that narrows toward the lower area, creating that pillow away motion as the section leaves. Easing stays flat here as well. By splitting enter and exit into two focused triggers, each phase has its own clean range and its own target shape that keeps the logic simple, avoids overlapping timelines, and lets us hard direct the incoming and outgoing masks independently. So that was it. Hope you found the video helpful. See you in the next one.